Welcome to another episode of COL Conversations. I'm Charles and I'll be your host for today. So it's been a while since we've had our last uh, COL conversation. And I think it's quite clear that one of the reasons why is because of the overall weakness of global equity markets, also including the Philippines. However, our featured company for today is actually one of the few strong strong performing issues that we have here locally. In fact, I think this data is as of yesterday, but our subject company ranks first in terms of the year-to-date performance of all PSEI members. So our, our company for today, GT Capital, has gone up by 25% since the start of the year, significantly outperforming the PSEI 7% decline. So for today, we hope to have a better appreciation of the reason for this outperformance. And more importantly, try to visualize, visualize what the future prospects of this company would be, right? both in terms of the business and also in terms of the share price. Okay? So as usual, before we get into that, some housekeeping first. We'd like to remind everyone that, that this conversation is not an endorsement nor a recommendation to invest. Instead, this is being conducted for all of us to have a better understanding of the company and the people behind it to help us make a more informed investment decision. Okay, so for our participants who submitted advanced questions, we'll be answering them later today. But of course, you can also type your questions in the Zoom Q&A tab, and we'll try to take up as much as we can. Uh, we also have analysts from our research team uh, to help answer some of your questions. Okay, so without further ado, please allow me to introduce our speakers for today. Our first speaker is Mr. Joey Crisol, GTCAP's Senior Vice President and Head of Investor Relations, Strategic Planning and Corporate Communication. We also have Mr. Francisco Suarez, GT Capital's Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer. I believe both Sir Francis and Sir Joey has had their roles in GTCAP since uh, the IPO in 2012. Right? Uh, so we hope to get a lot of insights from, from, from our resource uh, people today. Okay, uh, Thank you, Sir Francis, Sir Joy, for joining us today. You may take the floor. Thank you, Charles. And thank you for that very positive and encouraging introduction of GT Capital. I'd also like to thank our audience this afternoon. We sincerely appreciate your time. We, we value such uh, interaction with investors such as you because we would want to tell the GT Capital story. And as uh, Charles clearly explained earlier, we would like to show you our plans for the coming months, if not the years. We will also share with you some insights on how we have performed for the past six months of this year and how we view our company moving forward. So for this afternoon's presentation, it will be handled uh, by Francis for the financial aspect of it, and I will handle the updates on our subsidiaries. Before I turn over the floor to Francis, let me just show our structure in terms of ownership and the sectors in which we are invested. So as most, if not all of you know, we are the official holding company of the T Group in the Philippines, and currently we are invested in five key sectors of the economy, namely banking through Metro Bank, of which we own 37%, automotive through Toyota Motor Philippines, of which we own 51%, property development via federal land, which is 100% owned by GT Capital, life and non-life insurance through AXA Philippines, GT Capital owns 25% of that insurance company, and Last but not the least, Metro Pacific Investments, which is engaged in infrastructure and utilities, and we currently own 20% of that holding company. So with that, I'd like to turn the floor over to Francis for the financial highlights. Yeah. Thank you, Joey. Good afternoon to everyone. I'll be giving you a, a snapshot of our financial performance as of the first six months of this year. So in terms of uh, core net income, 
uh, GT Capital uh, reported 16.6 billion versus 8.1 billion as of the same period last year. And this represents a 106% improvement. So the major contributors to the core net income uh, include Metro Bank, Toyota Motor Philippines, Federal Land, and Metro Pacific. Now, uh, consolidated net income for the same period reached 16.58 billion. It's double from 8.3 billion in the same period last year. Now, the difference between consolidated and core net income, so there's about uh, 30 million difference, accounts for uh, some uh, non recurring income realized by one of our affiliates. Now, uh, we'd like also to highlight that uh, the core and core net income of the company included lot sales. And without the lot sales, core net income would still grow by 67%, while consolidated net income would still grow by 61%. Moving on, so comparing our uh, first half uh, financial performance versus uh, 2019 and the prior years, our 16.61 billion in terms of core net income is already uh, double the 8.1 billion in the 2022, and in fact even exceeds the full year 2022 net income performance. Likewise, if you compare it with 2019 uh, performance, it also exceeds the full year uh, core net income in 2019. In terms of consolidated net income, also it's better than uh, 2022 uh, levels. And then in terms of 2019, it's uh, much, much better as compared to the 7.2 billion that which was reported in the first half of uh, 2019. So moving on to the different uh, operating companies, we start with the bank. Operating revenues grew by 19% to 66 billion, and this was driven by net interest income and non interest income. While net income likewise improved by 34% to 20.9 billion, so driven again by asset expansion, improved margins, uh, better asset quality. The, we'd like to highlight that the 20.9 billion net income for the bank is actually a record performance as of the first half. Moving on to federal land, federal land's revenues grew by 77% to 11.8 billion. And this was driven by percentage of completion and uh, also lump sum payments from uh, completed projects. Net income uh, grew by 101% uh, to 1.5 billion. On our insurance uh, uh, associate, so gross premiums declined by 14%. To 12.9 billion, an offshoot of uh, market uh, uncertainties on on regular premium and single premium unit link products. However, that income improved by 18 percent to 1.3 billion. Next would be Metro Pacific. Metro Pacific share in operating core income grew by 27 percent to 12.4 12, 12 billion, while core net income. Uh, likewise improved by 33% to 9.9 billion. So the major contributors are the following operating companies, Meralco, arising from energy sales and uh, improvement in the contribution from power generation companies. Also, Mynilad, uh net income improving by 45%, arising from build volume and some uh, tariff, hike, tariff rate hikes. Lastly, for Toyota Motor Philippines, uh, revenues growing by 25% to 106 billion, while net income uh, more than doubled to 8 billion, again driven by improvement in sales volume, favorable models mix, and foreign exchange, the impact of uh, price increases. The, incidentally, the net income of Toyota for as of the first six months is also a record net income for the company. Moving on to the net income contribution of the company. Uh, of the GT Capital, uh, it's still auto and the banking segments that's contributed uh, significantly to uh, core net income. And it accounted for more than three fourths of consolidated net income for the period. So, but we'd like to highlight that uh, in terms of property, we see an improvement from 6% in the first half of last year to 9% contribution 
in the first half of this year. So driven by the record net income that was uh, reported. Likewise, uh, infrastructure and utilities uh, contribution improved to 11% to 10%. Now, at this juncture, I'd like to pass you on to uh, Joey for the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. And as you've heard, those were the financial highlights of GT Capital for the first half. Now I'd like to go on to the qualitative, if you will. So this is more of a story that we'd like to tell and to describe to you what has been happening in two out of the five sectors in which we are invested. If you recall earlier, I mentioned to you that we are in five. So let me just, uh, for the purposes of this afternoon's presentation, present to you property and automotive in as much as these two sectors in GT Capital's lines of business have quite a number of new projects in the pipeline. So let me begin with the property. And as I explained again earlier, our property is through Federal Land Incorporated, of which we own 100%. In July of this year, they launched the Seasons Residences, that's uh, the Fuyu Tower, one of several towers in BGC. And a month before that, they launched the Tower 2 of Shena Towers Project, which is in Santo Nino, Marikina. So as you can see, they are not just in central business districts, but they are also in other strategic locations in Metro Manila, such as Marikina. Moving on to the next, this is the one of the high-end luxury offerings of federal land and is branded as Grand Hyatt Manila Residences. As most of you know, this is in Bonifacio Global City. And if you look at this slide, the Grand Hyatt Manila Residences, the one to the right, is already close to 100% sold. And as of July this year, the other tower, which is the Manila South Tower Residences, is likewise close to 100% sold. So that shows how popular or how warmly the market receives the offerings of federal land. Another example is the Seasons Residences. Again, this is in Bonifacio Global City and it is worth noting that it was awarded the best condo development in the Philippines quite recently. If you notice, there are four towers standing on what is known as a podium. And that podium, I will explain later on, is a retail mall. What we want to tell you about this project is what you can see on the right-hand side of the screen, that most of the, well, three out of the four is already close to 100% sold, while the fourth tower, known as Fuyu, which was quite recently launched, is already at 30 percent sold. So just like the previous project that we presented, this is evidence of the popularity of federal lands condominium units. Moving on, this is what I mentioned earlier. The common podium where the four towers stand is actually known as Mitsukoshi BGC. Mitsukoshi BGC held its grand opening quite recently, July 21 to be exact. And as you can see, it is very much a Japanese-themed mall. One of the first, if not the first in the Philippines, to offer the Japanese look and feel when it comes to the retail experience. For those of you who have not visited Mitsukoshi BGC, I invite you to take a look and you will definitely enjoy the Japanese way of mauling, if you will. There are both food and non-food merchandise, which are all Japanese. And I'm sure for those of you who have a liking for anything Japanese, you will enjoy the experience of visiting Mitsukoshi BGC. Now, shifting to another uh, segment of our lines of business, and this is auto, auto, the auto industry to Toyota. As you know, Toyota Motor Philippines is 51% owned by GT Capital in partnership with Toyota of Japan. For its model launches this year, it's uh, already launched three, one in June, which is the Xenix. The Xenix is very interesting because I'm sure all of you are familiar with the Innova. And this Xenix is the hybrid electric vehicle variant of the very popular Innova. Again, uh, for those of you who know, 
the HEV is a hybrid, meaning it has both an internal combustion engine and a battery electric engine. So it's a combination of both, and it is very popular uh, across different countries in at least the ASEAN region. And here in the Philippines, it's starting to gain traction. And with the Scenics, we hope that there will be wider acceptance of HEV models in the Philippines. In July, the all-new WeGo was launched. The WeGo is Toyota Philippines low-cost green car, very affordable, just the right size for city driving, for families that are about to start. This is the ideal model. And in August, another HEV variant was made available, and this is the Yaris Cross. So similar to the Xenix, it has both an internal combustion engine and a battery engine. And this is starting to gain popularity as well. Now, this is the whole offering of Toyota when it comes to HEV vehicles. So as you can see, it has six, while its luxury end or its luxury brand Lexus has likewise six. Now, in the case of Lexus, it has introduced or launched its very first full battery electric vehicle, and that's what you see in the middle, known as the RZ450E. Briefly, I'd just like to mention that in the Philippines, Toyota's approach to electric vehicles is still through hybrid electric vehicles as it awaits the charging stations to come in. The flexibility of HEV variants is very suited for the Philippines when there are, where there are not yet enough or there are not yet sufficient numbers of charging stations. And just to explain, an HEV is self-charging. The gasoline engine and other components charge the battery of the electric motor. So you don't need to hook this up to a charging station or a ch charging port. But of course, uh, as I've said, for Lexus, it already has the full battery electric variant. Moving on, this is how Toyota Philippines is faring when it comes to electrified vehicles or particularly hybrid electric vehicles. If you look at Toyota on the left-hand side, they have grown significantly from just 89 units in 2019 to a high of 1,800 plus in 2022. And as of the first half of this year, it already sold 1,054. In terms of growth, that is 23%. But if you look at 2022, it achieved year-on-year 158% -year growth, which is significant. Well, if you look at the total sales, HEV at this point just accounts for 1.13%, but that is on a steady increase. And we expect uh, that mix to significantly grow as the years and models come along. In the case of Lexus, again, which is the high-end brand of uh, Toyota, it's a different story. They have already attained majority when it comes to HEV sales as percentage of total. Clearly seen on this slide is that they have already achieved 60% HEVs in their total sales mix. When it comes to absolute amounts, they are now as first half of this as of first half of this year sold close to 540 units as opposed to a low of 40 in 2022 compared to last year that equates to a growth of more than 400% very very significant increase in hevs as far as lexus is concerned so we move on now this is interesting because Lexus, again, this is part of the story of our auto business. Lexus has already overtaken the European brands, <clears throat> which have already been in the market ahead of Lexus. And uh, I think this is significant because as of first half 2023, Lexus accounted for 40% of overall market share in the luxury segment. And you can see that the others have uh, well tailed Lexus in terms of share of market. So very significant achievement for Lexus. Moving on. So let me just uh, share with you what uh, we have in store as far as GT Capital is concerned by way of providing some updates. On the property business, again, through Federal Land, it has launched a new brand within its offerings, and it's called Federal Land Communities. 
as a way of background, in the past, um, federal land was focused on high-rise residential condominium units. But with this recent brand that it is offering, it is more on the live-work-play township approach. So it is not just condominium units. It will also offer other um, platforms such as retail, commercial, all within a master plan community. So this is more of your estate development. As I've said, it's live, work, play. Moving on. And this is one key area when it comes to federal land's new offering. And this is in Cavite. Cavite, in general Trias to be specific, it is within a 600 hectare township and it is branded as River Park South and River Park North. <clears throat> there will be development starting late this year and will offer different products in the property space such as lot sales and land leases. By the end of this year, roads and utilities, at least in phase one, will be completed. So as you can see, there are different um, developments. We even uh, have an SM mall that's coming because we already, well, Federal Land established a joint venture with the SM Group. And then there will also be residential lots as well as commercial mixed-use property within the area. And if you notice, uh, we were also able to negotiate with our affiliate, Metro Pacific, the construction of two interchanges within the property project that will directly flow traffic into and out of the area, which will also lessen travel time from areas such as Makati and other parts of Metro Manila. On the next, we now shift to Toyota. And this is very exciting because uh, a few months ago, no less than the Toyota Global Chairman Akio Toyoda announced during Toyota Philippines 35th anniversary that starting next year, Toyota in the Philippines will assemble a third model. And this is initially called the IMV0 or Innovative International Multipurpose Vehicle. For those of us who remember the very famous Tamarau in the 70s and the 80s all the way to the early 2000s, this is like a throwback of sorts to that very, very popular Asian utility vehicle. But the difference is clearly, as you can see in this uh, concept designs, it will be more modern. And I think the key differentiator for this particular Toyota model is that it is customizable. You, the end user can configure it in such a way that will meet the needs of that end user, whether it be a service vehicle, a delivery vehicle, or even an ambulance. And most noteworthy is that it could even be uh, configured so that it will meet the requirements of the modernization of the PUV or the jeepney. As we know, there is this ongoing modernization program of the jeepney, and this is one good model uh, to be enrolled in that program. Now, as far as Toyota Philippines is concerned, it has committed to invest $4.4 billion and uh, the assembly will start sometime next year. <clears throat> and just to um, wrap up the discussion, we would also like to highlight, highlight our ESG performance at the GT Capital level. If you notice on the right-hand side in 2018, we practically had no ESG initiatives. We had no data to offer. But if you look at the middle part, 2023 to be exact, we have been given very high ratings by agencies such as Sustainalytics, MSCI, and CDP. This is just a example or a, a noteworthy initiative that we take our ESG seriously, and we intend to improve on this. Let me now close my presentation by sharing with you our key messages as of the first half of 2023 and as we speak uh, this afternoon. So we are positioned for further growth. Francis showed you earlier the record high earnings of the company across its businesses, Metrobank, Federal Land, and Toyota. That was indeed a significant achievement for the first six months of this year. As I've explained, we are also diversifying our offerings in the property sector, not only standalone vertical residential units, but we now have your live, work, play, estate development. <clears throat> me. 
we are also differentiating our property offerings with the infusion of Japanese technology. Our partners, such as Nomura Real Estate, have invested in a large way in the Philippines and they are expected to bring in their design and innovation. We also mentioned Federal Land Communities, which is a, <clears throat> excuse me, a whole new brand under the Federal Land Community brand. We are also elevating our dominance in the automotive sector. We have explained to you and shown to you our electri electrified vehicle lineup. And also in terms of auto financing and auto loans, we have the biggest within the group because we do have Philippine Savings Bank, Metro Bank, and Toyota Financial Services, all of which finance the sale of auto, uh, specifically Toyota vehicles in the Philippines. Now, lastly, we'd uh, like to share with you that the growth momentum we mentioned for the first half of this year is expected to be carried on for the rest of this year. So with that, I again thank uh, Call Financial and the audience for giving us this presentation uh, opportunity, and we'd like to entertain your questions through the Q&A. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Sir Joey and Sir Francis, for that uh, informative yet uh, still concise uh, presentation.